Last night, Xavier Howard, cornerback for the Miami Dolphins, who signed the biggest per year deal of any corner in the NFL three years ago in 2018. Now, since then, he has dominated in, at corner. He has proved his worth, and he has become now the second highest paid corner on his own team. He was upset about that. He wants the Dolphins to take care of him. There was conversation about him potentially requesting a trade or asking for a trade. Last night, we got a statement from Xavier Howard that said, hey, give me the fuck out of here. Now. <laughs> he said in this entire statement, he basically said, I've given my heart and soul to the Miami Dolphins. And he didn't basically say, this is what he said. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to read it on the screen with how far away the screen is. I can. So we might as well read it to get everybody else's potential full take on this as well. Smart. Absolutely. So Smart. you know the entire situation. So mm -hmm. you can judge it. So whenever I say what I'm going to say about the situation, you can be like a oh, prop. That is probably how it's going. Or kind of judge for yourself. You know what I mean, Todd? Yeah, sounds good. You know what I mean, Connor? It's absolutely, Pat. Pat. I have dedicated uh, nope I already <laughs> fucked it up I've given my heart and soul to the Miami Dolphins franchise since they drafted me in 2016 and want to make it clear that I love my teammates wow good to know Aaron Rodgers said that with Kenny Mayne on Kenny Mayne's last sports center now you can see Kenny Mayne on Peacock at, uh, with Kerry Champion on Olympic Nightly mm -hmm. have you guys watched oh, yeah. yeah I've seen a few good episodes plugs. good show yeah Back to Xavier Howard. They are my family, my teammates. But what I've learned is that the business side of the NFL proves organizations don't always have a player's best interest at heart. Okay, so this goes exactly to what I was saying yesterday about all these ex-players that were coming after Aaron and saying things about what Aaron had done because in the locker room, you realize that it is a business. That is what this is. And as you grow older in the NFL, you realize it more and more and more. You are the object on the table that that bald fuck Rick in Las Vegas is trying to fuck over the other people that are trying to sell it in Pawn Stars, okay? That is how it goes. You can sit on the shelf. You can have some ding in it. it might be a niche market you will be told those things it is a business it is pawn stars and you are the thing being pawned in between rick who's trying to fuck somebody over and somebody who probably just has to sell something so they can pay some bills yeah. mm. <laughs> well True. Said. yeah never gets talked about by the way now i went through an entirely deep pawn stars run and by the end of it i was just like this guy has fucked over two thousand straight people oh yeah at least and uh, and I've kind of been proud of him. <laughs> yeah. think I've kind of been like, hey, go yeah. way, good, hey, good, good swindle there, Rick. Good work, good swindle. Those there. Those people Rick. coming back in, seeing how much he's selling the stuff for afterwards. How about just watching the show? Today? Well, <laughs> I bought this for uh, six dollars and fifty five cents. I'm gonna be able to sell this for seven thousand five hundred. <laughs> And it's like, a pretty good day today or yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? Couldn't buy it at his price, 10 bucks. Had to get it at six. <laughs> yeah. But we will sell this at 7000 I'm like, good business, I guess. Yeah, it is good business. But then after you watch so many, and I went through an entire binging session, I start feeling terrible for the people that are getting kind of stooged around. Yeah, that. rightfully so. Anyways, that's what's happening whenever you're a player, though. At mm -hmm. a different level, different things are being talked about. It's not Civil War guns that only one person is an expert on who happens to be a friend of Rick's. Yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. Didn't think about that. That yeah. guy's got a good gig. Oh, uh, yeah, I got an expert right down here. <laughs> Family friend, known him for years. <laughs> Tell him. Uh, what is your expert on? I, I've read a lot of books. I've given myself a PhD in this thing. They always look like the most disheveled humans of all time. <laughs> a lot of butts. Ripping them. Hey, he knows, though. He knows that this, this gun can only be sold to probably two people on Earth, and if they, both of them are dead. <laughs> so so he's going to sit on the market for a long time. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's going down. All right. A couple of dings in it, too. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Best I can do is $15. Sorry. Seventeen oh, well, fifty? Well, $15.25, maybe. I mean, I got to sell this thing. Cash. Right now. Cash. Got it, deal. Right. <laughs> Boom. Turns around to the camera person behind him and goes, just bought this for $15.25. I will sell this for no lie, $75,000. <laughs> this is a one of one. That person just got fucked over completely. But the expert said, we got the gun. Mm -hmm. See you later. Pretty good morning. Hey, that's business, baby. I guess. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. And that's what the NFL is. It is a business. And Xavier Howard said it feels like they don't have the player's best interest at heart. My experience with the Dolphins the past few seasons has taught me that. In 2018, I signed an extension that I'll admit I didn't completely understand or feel comfortable with. Okay, so I'm not 100% sure what this means. And a lot of people, including myself, will say, Xavier, it is your fault if you don't understand the full contract. Now, follow up to that. 
The contracts in the NFL are loaded with a litany of clauses and sub things and this and that because the amount of lawsuits and litigation and fuckery that has happened in the past that adds to all contracts and makes it be, you know, whatever, 75 pages long. How is that what we need to sign? It happens everywhere, not just in the NFL, but these contracts that people sign very in depth. And if it's, it's not something that a lot of people say, you should never sign a contract that you haven't read all the way through. It's like, well, some of these contracts, I think they literally make it tougher to read than a goddamn Bible. Bible, all right. It's going to be if, if somebody we might get a deal done. And then for me, as somebody who never read a book, OK, in a month, hey, I mean, kind of proud of it because I got through a lot, but I don't think other people should do it. You should read. I was never able to do it. I read a lot on Twitter or whatever, but they make it impossible to read. If we were to get a deal done, then you're to read the entire contract that a team of lawyers put together for another team of lawyers to read like separately. It might take you four or five weeks to get through that thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally with asking questions and then going back and saying, what is this? So you have a lot of trust and faith in the people that you hire to read through these things. Xavier had that with his ex-agent and it made him him the highest salary per year cornerback in the NFL. Now, what does that mean? That obviously, when they say salary, that means they're getting rid of the bonuses that other people are probably getting maybe roster bonuses or anything like signing bonuses that could make the money big. But the deal he signed, I don't know what he's alluding to to not understanding. I think that is more so him bashing his ex-agent, his ex-representation for not fully explaining to him what was going on in a very difficult, I can't stress this enough, law shit is very difficult to read. It, it is the words, and then there's checkbacks, and then there's follow-ups, and then there's, it's very difficult to read. I, I think a lot of people who maybe didn't go through law school to learn all the bullshit <laughs> that they add into these contracts so they can keep other people that went through law school in business, I think like it's gonna be difficult to be able to read through it and understand it completely. So everybody's immediate reaction is to wanna shit on Xavier and Howard, and I will say, you should, I guess, because in theory, this is something he should fully understand. It is his life. It's the most amount of money. But it is damn near impossible for somebody who's just a layman to go through a contract and fully understand it. So I think that was more so a shot at his ex-agent. He has new representation now. Maybe he didn't know when the outs were. He didn't know when the money was coming. He didn't know what it was, how it was, wasn't explained properly, and he didn't fully understand it. That might be what he's referring to. But I think everybody's natural reaction is to shit on him there. And I don't think that is necessarily as fair as it should be coming from a regular ass dude as, a, as somebody that has been in the world. Let's get back into his message now. Um, I'm one of the best cornerbacks of the NFL. Oh, I played on that deal for two seasons and didn't complain, but everyone knows I've significantly outperformed that deal. I think he had 10 picks or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's unbelievable. He gave up zero yards, I think, for the first four games of the season last year. He's, a, he's an absolute stud. He has He's top corner in the league. He, in his eyes, in, in everybody's eyes, he's at least top three Top five or whatever. Right. We'll talk to Gerard Powers, by the way, out of Auburn uh, and also former teammate of mine for the Indianapolis Colts. He was also at the Arizona Cardinals and the Baltimore Ravens, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, knows B.A. well. Uh, we'll get a chance to chat with him about the Buccaneers and Xavier Howard in this entire situation. But Xavier Howard would continue to go on. Uh, I'm one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL, and the tape backs me up on that. I want to clear up a few uh, misconceptions about my situation. My agent, David Cantor, and I have never once asked for a completely new contract. We would just like like some things altered a little bit. Uh, we wanted things to work out with the Dolphins and brought solutions to the table, like guaranteeing more money, that we felt were win-wins for both sides. These were proposals of adjustments that wouldn't just make me feel more respected, but were also cap-friendly, but the Dolphins refused everything we proposed. That is why I don't feel like the organization has dealt with me in good faith. I don't feel valued or respected by the Dolphins, just like they can take a business-first approach. So can I, dude. That's why I want to make it clear. I am not happy and have requested a trade. Until that trade happens, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Shout out to Marshawn, by the way, on first take this morning, dropping, hey, they both bullshitting on there. <laughs> yeah. They will handle myself like professionals do. Xavier Howard has made that statement. Now, the whole situation is... I'm just here so I won't get fined. Marshawn Lynch was doing that for a media day at Super Bowl on a Tuesday with a bunch of people he doesn't know. Xavier Howard said, hey, you're going to see me. All right? Mm -hmm. Making plays. You're going to see me in this practice. We'll be out there. All right, you're going to see me. I'm not here, though. Like, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not here. I'm, not here. <clears throat> I'm in these meetings, okay, in the room with somebody that they're paying more money to on my own team. 
somebody that is, hey, I love my, I love my teammates, okay? I'm here, but if somebody wants to motherfucking come get me out of here, I would be very, very thankful for that. And when you see me around, it ain't no go dolphins. It ain't fins to the left, fins to the right. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just here because I know that it is $50,000 a day, and I'm pissed about money to begin with. I'm not going to start right. giving it away. So if somebody wants to come get me, let's do it. A lot of teams saw this. A lot of fan bases saw this. And we're like, hey, get him to our squad. Get him to our team. I don't know if the Dolphins are going to be in that. I guess B-Flow came out this morning and said he thinks that it is fixable. Is it? Is it not? That's a lot of drama down there in Miami, though, especially after the big payment for Kyle Van Noy. Yeah. Then cutting Kyle Van Noy, yeah, uh -huh. paying Kyle Van Noy to play for the Patriots this year. Yeah. It's crazy what's going on down in the Dolphins when it felt like they were potentially on the precipice of real success, too, with the NFC or AFC East kind of going the way it's going. For